Good morning guys, Tony Maritato here, physical therapist, and welcome to the Total Knee Replacement Support Group YouTube channel. So in this video, I wanna answer a question that came from the Facebook group. And this individual was asking about, I'm just gonna call it lateral stability of her total knee replacement. And what happened, and I've had patients in the clinic with this situation before, you guys have probably heard me say quite often, I know it's frustrating to have a tight knee. I know it's frustrating to not get the range of motion and potentially have a manipulation under anesthesia. But I think it's far less frustrating to have a knee that's too tight than a knee that's too loose. And what I mean by that is there are structures that surround the knee. There's connective tissue and ligaments. These are the structures that provide support and kind of hold the knee together. Because really, when you think of the anatomy of the knee, and I've got some other videos talking about anatomy, there's the tibia, which is the bone of the shin. There's the femur, which is the bone of the thigh. These two bones kind of come together, form the knee joint. The patella is the kneecap that floats on top. But really, other than the connective tissue, the ligaments primarily, there is nothing holding those bones together. And so when we look at the knee structure itself, there's four primary ligaments that we want to talk about. There's a lateral and medial collateral ligaments. Those ligaments run along either side of the knee. And then within the knee, before the knee replacement, there's an ACL and PCL, an anterior and posterior cruciate ligament. So the ACL, PCL keep the, let's just say the tibia, the shin bone, from moving front to back too far. But the collateral ligaments keep the lower leg, the shin bone, from moving side to side. And so that side to side stability is really important. Sometimes patients after a knee replacement will have difficulty with the lateral stability, the side to side. And so in this Facebook post, somebody was asking about the uh, lateral stability of her knee. She said that her physical therapist tested the lateral stability and I do that when I do an initial evaluation. Basically the way I do it is I hold the client's ankle, I put my hand on the outside of the knee and I gently press inward and then I do the same thing going the other way. Grab the ankle again, put my hand on the inside of the knee, I gently press outward. And what should happen is there should be a little bit of give, but there should there's a certain amount where that starts to become loose. So we would never intentionally stretch the knee laterally, but we want that stability to be in there to make sure that when a patient takes a step on an uneven surface, if the ankle kind of, uh, if you think of an ankle sprain or you step on an uneven crack in the sidewalk, you want to make sure that that knee is going to be stable side to side. So this particular uh, group member was asking what she should do. Should she have a revision? I certainly cannot make a recommendation to that extreme. Uh, that requires a decision made between the patient, the physical therapist, and the physician. But I can say that typically ligaments, we are not able to air quote strengthen a ligament. You can strengthen a muscle, um, muscles turn into tendons, you know, we can't strengthen ligaments. And when you think of the difference between a ligament, a ligament connects bone to bone, a muscle or a tendon connects muscle to bone. Even the strongest muscle, even the most strength you can build through the quadricep, the hamstring, the gastroc, it'll provide support while the person is active, but at rest, muscles do not provide support. Ligaments provide support. So I would certainly, and I, I assure you that your physical therapist and your medical team are probably saying exactly the same thing. If it was my client, after I did an initial evaluation, I would look at building strength through the supporting structures. The front of the thigh, the back of the thigh, the calf, the quad, the hamstring, the gastroc. I would look at improving what we call proprioception meaning your ability to control the hip and the ankle, because if you control everything above and below the knee, then you provide stability to the knee itself. So I would be doing balance exercises under the supervision of a physical therapist. I would be doing things that improve my awareness, my kinesthetic awareness of where my body is in space, coordination, things like that. 
and then I would really be looking at making a, a decision at some point, not right away, because it's not the kind of thing that you have to decide today, but down the road, I would try to see how much of an issue this becomes for me in day-to-day -day life. Now, all of that being said, I've had clients, I'm thinking of a particular one, who is very athletic. He, um, I think when I saw him, he was right around 65, had been a college athlete, had played golf his whole life, played tennis, all, all the normal sports. And when he had his knee replaced, he had significant lateral instability um, to the point where I, I was genuinely concerned. We sat down, we had a discussion about it. He had mentioned, I believe, that the surgeon told him that one of his, his uh, lateral LCL, um, lateral collateral ligament, had been ruptured prior to surgery. And so he was going to have some issues with that stability. That being said, we formulated a plan. We looked at footwear, we looked at ankle, we looked at hip. We tried to do everything in our power to, to improve his balance, to improve his reactive um, recovery. So if he stepped on something that was an uneven surface, he could recover. We built strength throughout the whole lower extremity, but we also built strength through the rest of the body because nothing functions independent of everything else. The body is a system. And more than anything, we made him aware of the situation so that he understood why he felt in certain positions his knee wanted a buckle and how he could kind of plan a little bit to prevent that from happening. You know, so if he was gonna walk in the grass, which I would never tell him not to do something, if he was gonna walk in the grass, go to the beach, you know, step on sand, he just had to be a little more aware. And he had to be aware of the fact that as he fatigued, he would naturally lose a little bit of the motor control and he would increase his risk of allowing the knee to buckle. So we, we became very conscious and aware of the fact that okay, maybe I can do you know a 20 minute walk, but when I get to the 30 minute walk, maybe I'm not gonna do 30 minutes on soft sand on a, in the water because that's just too much for me to handle right now because I'm, I'm in a tired state, you know? So it absolutely can be managed and it absolutely can be improved and it's definitely not anything that should limit you into the future. It's one of those opportunities to say, okay, I acknowledge the situation. This is what we're finding. Let's create a plan. Let's take control. Let's figure out how we're going to make this work to my advantage. And now let's start working on that plan. So, you know, one week, four weeks, um, I don't know, six months, 12 months, you've got goals that are going to get you from where you are right now to where you want to be, but it absolutely can be managed. Just connect with the team around you. The physical therapist will do what they need to do to help you get to where you want to go. So I hope that was helpful. Um, guys, I will do my best to provide education and information based on your questions. If you share them here in the YouTube comments or if you share them in the Facebook group. I can't get to all the YouTube comments. You guys have been amazing with your posts, but if you want more feedback, feel free to jump into the Facebook group. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next video.